You swipe through your hair with one hand to free your vision. Your one working eye focusing on the small creatures attempting to swarm you, climbing through the rafters of the play area as they giggled, chuckled, and hummed. It would be a horrifying thing if it wasn't for a certain amount of routine that you had by now. The small plush creatures were violent and degenerate, their tiny white eyes gleaming up at you. You climbed further up, as the more adventurous critters tried climbing too, but you threw yourself against the rope wall, causing them to fall, and yet they kept laughing. Finally, as you reached the ceiling, you held onto the ropes until you were right above the middle of the room, where you snaked your legs around the hanging wires. You hung just out of reach, the critters trying to pile up, but they were too vicious, too hungry, too feral to organize properly. You furred your brows. No, you did this enough. They were smart. They could organize. This was a distraction. You knew it. You turned your head back towards the rope wall, where multiple critters were now climbing up. Your cracked face perked up into a crooked smile as you unholstered the spear hanging from your back. Skillfully you began poking the creatures trying to climb. This was easier than last time. Last time they actually managed to almost rip the long-ranged weapon off of you. You stabbed a Bobby Bearhug critter, causing it to loudly scream. The knife you had taped at the end of the long pipe was sticking out of the thing's chest, blood spewing from the wound like a fountain. The little monsters hesitated for a moment, unsure if they should prioritize survival over the potential food source that you were. Taking the opportunity you pulled the spear in, removed the corpse and shoving it into your hip pouch. The critters soon never managed to gather themselves. You were on the clock now, as they rushed towards you like rapid spiders. Your spear piercing multiple critters, all finding a place in your pouch. You were hungry. So it was getting heavy, and the endless flood of the monsters wasn't ceasing. Even the pile below you, which you had neglected, was getting dangerously close to your hanging hair. You exhaled through your mouth as you clawed back against the wires after strapping the spear back onto your back. Your eyes moving over the creatures. Opposite to you, the first ones managed to cling to the ceiling. Quickly, like a monkey, you used your arm strength to quickly pull and move forward. The swarm of colorful, dirty plushies beneath you screamed in rage. It was fun. Exhausting, but fun. Sweat began to roll down your exposed flesh, your eye twitching, feeling a strange sort of bliss, the bliss of a hunt. You dropped down on the colorful scratched bloody floor as the beast screamed and scurried after you. Deciding a comedic hand wave would take way too much time, you almost reluctantly jumped into a red slide tube to wherever it led. You roughly understood the layout of the playhouse. However, inconveniently, it seemed to change its layout occasionally. Probably cause of that damned cat. You landed foot first into the mouth of one of the ruined critters. Its plastic maw biting down on your foot harshly, causing you to violently stomp on the floor, breaking the critter's neck almost immediately. You shrugged as that one too went into your bag. However, as you were about to run to the next tube, a sharp breath from behind you caught your attention. <sighs> Who's there? <gasps> Who's there? A voice almost human, a little 
staticky, artificial, a toy, a bigger body's one most likely, just like you. You were a cherry cheerleader doll. Well, not much of a cheerleader in your left, however. You are part of a line of dolls called Sharks and Stripes. The Sharks being a red-coated football team, and the Stripes being a football team dressed in American flags. It was pure Cold War propaganda at the time. Action figure footballers for the boys and trendy cute cheerleaders for the girls. A sort of unisex collection of toys often misappropriated by indie stop-motion animators on the internet to make adult animations. You had ditched your somewhat skimpy Red Sharks uniform for the tattered remains of a Playtime co-employee. You had long plastic blonde hair that reached just past your shoulders, had one functioning blue eye and a very broken and cracked plastic shell that functioned like an insect's exoskeleton. In fact, half of your face was missing due to it being chewed on by another bigger toy. A huggy wuggy. It was all thanks to your spear you managed to at least scare the beast off, leaving you alone. You had a goal in the factory, and that was survival. And getting out. Though you were desperately afraid of the demon, the prototype. For all you knew it was responsible for all this. The cause of the Hour of Joy, in which all other bigger bodies' toys began slaughtering the other staff. At the time, you yourself had been in surgery to become what you were now. Perhaps what kept this connection to humanity was the terrible awakening out of a blissful induced sleep into what you perceived as the post-apocalypse. You didn't suffer like the other toys, through human hand. You only saw the suffering they inflicted on others. Plus, you had the benefit of looking at least somewhat human. Unlike the other toys. You stepped forward towards the noise, and then past the corner, you saw him. It was a tall critter, the dark one. He was hanging from multiple belts, breathing heavily as he tried to survive, to stay sane, to stay awake. His black eye staring right at you. Oh, who are you? His speaking was strained. Half of his body was missing. A bloody belt was tightly wrapped around the monster's waist, blood dripping from it. More than likely, this belt was what kept him from dying, for having his organs spill out. I have never seen you before. You inhaled sharply. Are you an angel? Here to stop it? Or are you a devil here to strike me down once and for all? There were multiple pipes leading to the dog. You narrowed your functioning eye as Dog Day focused on you. You cannot talk, little doll. Your failure. They would have terminated you if this all didn't happen. I don't know if you're lucky. Or unlucky. You felt a little insulted. You have seen them, the little ones. They follow catnap to avoid my fate. In return, they get fat. Sadly, Doc Day hung his head. Though you did assume as such. After all, they left the cat alone. Just leave me here. You angel or devil, my fate is sealed either way. You took the spear of your back. Using the lipless half of your face, 
You use your teeth to tear off the duct tape. What are you doing? Don't you know they're coming? I can smell them, hear them. You have to run if you want to live. He shouted with all his remaining strength, but alas, you were determined to save him, though you didn't know why. Using a trick you knew that you used to get out of a stimulus situation, you slid your blade across Dog Day's wrists, the left and the right one. He exhaled sharply. Oh, what are you doing? With the flesh blood lubricating his hands, you pulled off the first belt around his right arm. So you are determined to die here? Your eyes looked up at him, narrowing ever so slightly. But then, your heart almost stopped. Out of one of the pipes, you saw the grinning face of one of the little ones. Dark Day, horrified, followed your gaze. You need to run! He shouted again. Now you are mad. You cut through the next belt that kept his shoulder in place, almost breaking your knife. As from behind you, you could hear the mass of ruined ones coming closer. Your eye rotated in its socket as you panicked. A single tear coming out of it. And then you just... pulled. Dark Day grunted in pain. By now you had managed to free his right arm fully, but his left arm was still very much in place. I know what you're trying, little doll. I don't know why you're doing it. Dark Day then screamed in pain. And then again, as you put your entire strength into just pulling. And so you broke his left arm almost completely. Though it did allow you to pull him out of there. Dark Day broke out into tears. The pain was too strong and he wished he'd pass out. As he hung from your shoulder, he was breathing panicked breaths while you carried him to a nearby sliding tube. It was an hour later. You had transported the heavy toy man into the artificial outside of Playcare, where he had exhausted and crumbled to the floor. He himself managed to pull himself against the wall as your light faced first on the ground. Little doll, angel of my rescue, why did you do this? I don't understand. He sounded mad and disappointed at the same time. My suffering could have finally ended. <sighs> they would have devoured me. You rolled your head on the side, staring, blinking. Dog Day narrowed his black eyes. Is that Morse code, little doll? That is crafty. Very much so. And yet... I do not speak in moors. Disappointed, you blew out of your mouth, causing him to shake his head. Your breath smelled of decay and burnt plastic. He exhaled, strained, and yet relieved. Though I doubt my rescue will remain hidden for long, little doll. Catnap will come after you and me. Shaking, you stood up. Once again, putting Dark Day on your back. He used his functioning right arm to wrap around your shoulders. I suppose I have to trust you, little savior. I trust you to bring us to safety. Cautiously, you walked over to the alien Ludwig Express gondola you used to invade Catnap's territory for food every once in a while. 
You knew not to inhale the scary red smoke that came from the giant monster's mouth. And should you be forced to, you had crafted a somewhat functional face covering. It was just some cloth that you could put on your head with two eye holes through which you had glued two glass goggles. But it worked. It weakened the smoke enough to merely disorient you, maybe make you a little dizzy, but not just straight up fall asleep. Luckily, tonight you didn't encounter catnap on your hunt. Well, at least not yet. As just as you activated the gondola to return to your base, located at one of the train stations going through the underground complex, you spotted Catnap galloping out of the orphanage's main building. He looked after you with eternal malice. Laughing almost happily, Dog Day shouted back. <laughs> Farewell, old friend. I hope our paths may never cross again. <laughs> uh, little doll. Little doll, savior of my life. I never ever in my life thought I would feel this happy again. And for all I know, this interaction between the two of us is but a mere dream while I'm being consumed alive. But if this is the case, then I'm glad my brain conjures up this hallucination and I get to die happy. You looked at him, kneeling down next to Dark Day. What are you thinking, little doll? He placed his functioning hand on the plastic half of your face. <sighs> My savior. His savior. A zombie-like children's toy. Broken. Weathered. Cracked. With bloody hair. Gore-covered attire. And still a little shoulder pouch filled with the dead corpses of the little critters. He could tell that you had seen horrors beyond imagination. He wondered who suffered more, you or him. And yet, despite all the doom and gloom in this world, in this moment, you were the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. A strange yet tender moment for the hell the two of you had found yourselves in. And your eye widened at his touch. A little bit of drool flowing out of the lipless half of your mouth through the gaps of your teeth. Little doll. You leaned forward pressing her face into the ruined plush of his chest, and he gasped in surprise. Putting his hand on your back, he then shook. Your teeth were scraping against his pelt. Dog Day tasted like ash, blood, and salt. Uh, little doll? He gasped. You were licking his chest, nibbing at his felt, and running your hands over his body in a wonderful manner, almost like petting but a little more sensual. He grunted. The gondola was still squeaking and scratching along its path. What are you doing? You weren't eating him, which is what he expected. No, you were... you were showing him... Affection? As if the tender touch of his on your cheek was causing you to unleash all your frustrations on him. In a more pleasurable way. He didn't protest, of course. He tried moving his left arm, but it was too damaged. Whenever he tried moving it, the pain was strong enough and he passed out for two seconds. 
Uh, he wished you had to just cut it off already. But then it had zero chance of healing. Perhaps some chance of it putting itself back together was better than just having it gone entirely. His eyes then narrowed lovingly as you suckled on his chest. He exhaled loudly, causing her eye to move up and focus on his face. I do apologize, little doll. I seem to lack the extremities to satisfy your blossoming lust. But... You reached up to him, cradling his white fluffy face in your hands. I suppose you're crafty enough to find a way to enjoy yourself with me after all. You press your teeth and what was left of your lips against the speaker inside of his mouth. He groaned pleased. He could feel you, your warmth and the wetness of your mouth. The vibrations from the loudspeaker making you produce a sound akin to a pleased purr. Well, seems like there were some ways you could express in sound. His functioning hand placed against your back erupt over you. Soft circles. Warm rubs. Again he winced as you bit down on his lip just enough to not draw blood. And then you purred, pushing off of him. Smiling, a crooked smile. Crawling just an arm's length away from him, into a very suggestive sitting position. His eyes widened lustfully, as you began to slowly unbutton your tattered shirt. Hey, thank you for watching my video until the very end, but before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, Hella, Bitbit, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, Sleepy Town, Angel, Zachary, Nicodemus D, Ash Wisdom, Ikea, The Tribute, and AJ Anime Girl for being wonderful tier 2 and tier 3 channel members and of course a big thank you goes out to my tier 1 channel members your wonderful wonderful little mates <laughs>